published and announced at one. We continue with our discussion now. The next speaker is Mr. Omaji. Madam President, Commissioner, a community under the rule of law cannot exist without that rule of law. What makes Europe is its common foundations of values that it's built on, values which have been asserted and defended that brought us out of the darkness of fascism, dictatorship and war to become this space of freedom and equality before the war, law that we now define. The rule of law is not an option. It's not a simple form of conditionality. It is a condition which is existential in nature. And this is why, wherever at this juncture, the rights of women and minorities, ethnic, religious minorities, LGBTI, independence of the, justi of the judiciary is called into question, the European Commission must pass sanctions. They must pass sanctions now, because in not doing it, is to take a huge risk for the future. Thank you. Herzlichen Dank, Herr Kollege. Thank you very much, sir. We continue with Miss Ponsati Obiols. Thank you very much, Madam President. It's ironic, it's an ironic coincidence that this debate on the rule of law mechanism takes place in the same week that this parliament has approved to waive my immunity together that of my colleagues Puigdemont and Comin because of a political prosecution. Article 3 of the regulation says that endangering the independence of the judiciary is a clear indicative of breaches in the principle of law. Nice. In recent weeks, your colleagues have received information about the lack of independence of judges in Spain, judges that ignore the presumption of innocence, judges that want political prisoners subject to re-education programs, yes, re-education programs, judges that hold in contempt the reports of the United Nations Working Group on arbitrary detentions. But hey, it's Spain, so the Commission and the Council look the other way. In fact, the regulation is so weak that it's only about the budget. So no worries about persecution of dissidents as long as it does not affect the budget. It's been a bad week for this parliament, but colleagues, I'm hopeful fraction of you, not a majority, but a good fraction of you, did not bend to the pressures, the Please authoritarian sir, pressures of Spain. Thank you very much. Thank you. We continue with Ms. Holmeyer. Liebe Frau Präsidentin. President, if you hear some MEPs, there is not much politeness. And I think you're presiding well, Commissioner. On the 1st of January 2021, the conditionality mechanism came into force. The Council conclusions of December asked the Commission to come up with guidelines for the application, which would include the potential dismissal by the ECJ. But we haven't yet heard from the ECJ, but on the 15th of March, we need to have heard by them. I will just remind you that we're talking about a regulation here and it must come, it has come into force. It doesn't matter if there are guidelines or anything else. It can only be modified by a ruling of the ECJ. The Commission, as guardian of the treaties, must apply the mechanism regardless of criticisms leveled by governments. When the ECJ has ruled, then of course the rulings of the court must be implemented. We expect the Commission to continue to its work on the guidelines and to consult the Parliament on the guidelines. We are therefore writing our own initiative report with the relevant committee. Thank you very much. We now hear from Miss Walters.
Thank you, Chair. Um, 70 days, that is the number of days since the new rule of law regulation entered into force. And in those 70 days, Hungary's last large independent radio station was taken off the air. And of course, those 70 days were used by the Polish government to continue to undermine the independence of its judges. And every day the Commission waits with making use of the powers that it now has is another day lost for the citizens of Poland and Hungary, indeed the citizens that my colleague Reintke here referred to. The Commission has made little progress so far in flexing its muscles and that worries me. The European Parliament from its side will do everything it can to make sure that the rule of law is upheld. From our side, we'll make sure that the political and legal measures at our disposal are used if the Commission does not act rapidly on Poland and Hungary. And that includes legal action for the failure to act under Article 265 of the Treaty. But I urge the Commission not to let it come to that. Because if it takes its instructions from individual governments rather than from jointly agreed European law, then, of course, it contributes to the very problem that it should now be fighting, the erosion of the rule of law in Europe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Walters. We continue with the discussion and we hear from Mr. Kerner. I give you the floor, sir. Thank you very much, Madam President. The crisis of the rule of law in Europe is one of the most urgent issues. Every year, money is disappearing into people's pockets. Judiciaries are being attacked and still people are talking about a big campaign. Well, normally they're always in favour of so little money is spent at European level as possible. But now that EU money has been completely abusively used and lining or dictators' pockets, you are defending in the European Parliament this action which shows your hypocrisy and the denial of uh, accepting reality. I can't turn to my electors, to European taxpayers, and explain why we are allowing our own office, OLAF, co to combat fraud, that there's a massive amount of abuse of the use of money in Hungary and we're doing nothing. The House is on fire. The Commission now has instruments in its hand to do something, but the Commission is like uh, the fire service that comes to a burning house and starts talking about guidelines. And maybe they should uh, wait for the ECJ before they actually put the fire out. That's unacceptable. This Parliament is establishing that the Commission is responsible to us. We have elected you. We can uh, remove you from office. You are not responsible to the Member States or the European Council in the first line. We have a regulation. We want you to apply this regulation and we want the European Commission to act. Otherwise, we will apply Article 265, Ms. von der Leyen, the rule of law is on fire. Please put that fire out, finally. Thank you very much. We now hear from MEP Kuz. Thank you, President. Commissioner Hahn. Mr. Kerner. I think you are underestimating the rules and the rule of law has no alternative. That's absolutely necessary. And if you come to the Budgetary Control Committee, you will understand that we are also in favor of budgetary discipline and the rule of law. We're fighting along with everyone else. Squandering of money cannot be accepted and we need to fight against it tooth and nail. But does this rule of law mechanism constitute the right instrument? I have some serious reservations about that. Thus far, Article 7 hasn't been applied. And why? And thank goodness there is the principle of unanimity. 
Now, I have kept a very close eye on proceedings and the negotiations in December and November. And it was clearly decided that after Poland and Hungary withdrew their veto, they could turn to the European Court of Justice. And the rules would only come in force laterwards. But now they still have the right to refer the matter to the European Court of Justice. And when we're talking about the rule of law mechanism, don't always point at Poland and Hungary. We should point the finger at ourselves too, because we have our own problems which we should keep an eye on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kuz. The next speaker is Mr. Yaki. Thank you, President. Well, he, we are seeing that the EU is uh, making uh, promises about COVID uh, and could be uh, looking at uh, COVID issues, and yet you're looking at Poland. You're telling us um, meaningless statements, the rule of law, and its, its significance in the EU. Well, perhaps, Commissioner, you will be brave enough to compare uh, the judge system, the system of uh, the judiciary system in Poland with that in Germany. Germany has the most politicized judiciary in uh, Europe. The, Poland has the same system as Spain. You need to find that in your own documents. So please tell us, why do you think that this, same system is a breach of law in Poland, but not in Spain. It's a double standard. Do you uh, are you brave enough to answer that question? In the Aussprache. Thank you. We continue with Miss Rego. Gracias, señora presidenta. Thank you, President. A few months ago, we were looking at the risk of the violation of rule of law as regards European funds. You can't just apply with human rights from time to time. And now the Council wants to lower standards and wants us to turn a blind eye. Women aren't being allowed to terminate even when they're at risk of losing their lives. There are so-called LGBT free zones. There are threats against journalists. There are problems at the borders. And the council wants us to pretend as if nothing was wrong at all. But actually, things are changing. The democratic anomalies pushed by the extreme right and collaborationists are finally seeing that there is change coming. Thank you very much. We continue with Mr. Hidvegi. Over to you. Thank you, uh, President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in December, the heads of state of uh, the EU uh, made a historic pact and uh, basically said that uh, no ideological condition can be set uh, for uh, for budget for the budget because uh, EU st support serves the purpose of bringing member states uh, closer together uh, for cohesion and not for blackmail. The December agreement is very clear about that and Parliament should finally accept that. The EU functions well when it functions based on the EU, uh, on, the, on the treaties. The treaties uh, can be changed uh, through unanimity and the sovereignty of member states cannot be violated. It is uh, sad that uh, the European Parliament uh, should sacrifice this to continue these baseless accusations that they have been doing and leveling against uh, conservatives. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Halitsky, you have the floor. Uh, sorry, he's in Warsaw, yes. Herr Halitsky, bitte. Dzień dobry, pani przewodnicząca. 
Rozpo- Thank you. Uh, I'd like to say hello from Warsaw. Now, this is very clear. This is a question of sh- protecting the budgetary means from the EU. For example, if fundamental values in the constitution or uh, constitutional law is abused, then that is something that needs to be addressed. Nobody has the right to violate those particular values. Now, even if you talk about sovereignty, you can't abuse those values because sovereignty is not an absolute agreement to allow any kind of abuse. The people, the governments who respect constitution, the rule of law, have nothing to fear here. The obligation that rests on our shoulders as the European Parliament and on the shoulders of the uh, European Commission is to protect companies, regions, the beneficiaries of this money, because the money has to reach them, not go to autocrats who want to get their hands on this money to use them for propaganda or whatever. When it comes to the polls, we will not accept a lack of control on financial means. We expect specific action. Thank you very much to Warsaw. And now we continue here in the chamber with Mr. Piedron. Szanowna Pani Przewodnicząca, Panie Komisarzu. President, Commissioner, my voters tell me that the European Union is a bit like the Titanic. We carry on in a civilized, very nice way with our debates, whereas in Poland and Hungary, there are many brave people out in the streets trying to protect women's rights and protect rights of minorities uh, for freedom of media and communication and the judiciary. Commissioner, how many debates are we going to hold in the European Parliament before the European Commission understand that the clock is ticking. This mechanism is a, a hope that has been arose by, uh, that has been um, focused on by a number of uh, citizens in Poland and Hungary who have democracy in their hearts, and the EU should pre- protect them against Orban and Kaczynski and everybody who is trying to uh, push their citizens down. No single euro can land in the hands of Kaczynski or Orban um, for them to strengthen their anti-democratic systems because uh, it's basically, um, you know, it's irresponsible and this money cannot land in their hands and we have to be very clear we have to work with NGOs and free media and citizens from these countries uh, all those who are fighting for democracy and that's the message that we have to send out from here both to Poland and Hungary and the rest of the EU thank you very much now Miss Ayer Thank you, President, Commissioner. Dear colleagues, somewhat a conservative, even liberal Europe, I therefore ask you to look at the continued efforts we've made over the centuries. If tomorrow a European is accused of a crime, he would expect the judge to rule on the accusations, not on his political or social opinions, which are not to the liking of those in power. No government can sidestep the judiciary and justice. That's the bedrock of democracy. I want Europe, which has prospered thanks to freedom and impartiality, to be progressive, where you have the freedom to choose your sexual orientation, the freedom to stand in elections without intimidation, the freedom to inform without being threatened, and above all, you won't be worried because of those choices. That's the Europe of the treaties. And that's the Europe that the Commission must now ensure is respected. Thank you very much. And now, Ms. Wisniewska, you have the floor. Thank 
you very much, Madam President, Commissioner. Today is the moment of truth. For months now, representatives of the Commission have been underscoring the fact that the rule of law conditionality mechanism is meant to protect the budget. It's meant to be an objective, demonstrable, uh, proportionate mechanism. So now we have the moment of truth, because I listened to the previous speaker, who represents the left, which uh, has the majority in this House. And the conclusion is clear. This is a tool to punish, to attack the right. That's what you want. We haven't achieved to get Article 7 applied to Poland, so now you're putting in place a so-called conditionality mechanism. What's the conditionality here? Conditionality of democracy in Poland? Because the democratic government in Poland was elected, and this seems to be lost sight of by the parliament. Are you calling into question with this mechanism? Are you trying to influence European citizens by doing that? Because that's not in line with the treaties. How can you do that, Commissioner? How can you do that? I could consider your um, actions inappropriate for this hem hemicycle. Our party are the object of these attacks, interrupted by the President. <laughs> We'll continue our debate with Ms. Björk. You have the floor. The threat against democracy and the rule of law are verifiable. For countries such as Poland and Hungary, they've undermined the independence of the judiciary, they've attacked the media, they've attacked civil society. And the left would have liked to have seen much more powerful instruments focusing in on helping democracy and defending democracy and the rule of law. Now this instrument is somewhat wing-clipped, and it's meant to defend the budget, but it has to be used. And this is where things become obvious. The Commission has used so many words to not do anything. Monitoring, toolbox, dialogue. You have been aware of this for years. Why are you not doing anything? And because you're not doing anything, you're not just undermining the people fighting for democracy and the rule of law in Poland, but us as well, because these authoritarian governments are applying laws, because they're in the Council of Ministers, that apply the whole to the whole of the EU. For every day you don't act, we see this spreading. Now we've seen it in Slovenia, where the media's been attacked. Democracy cannot wait. LGBTI activists, women's activists, journalists activists cannot wait. You must act now. The debate continues now with Mr. Rangel. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Frau Präsidentin. I must say that the values of rule of law are the values of European Union. And it is a great success that we manage to have now this regulation into force. This was a dream of a lot of members of this House that came true. However, I should make two remarks here. First, it's not acceptable that we start the implementation and application of a rule of law regulation violating the rule of law because it is in practice suspended till a decision of Luxembourg court. And I regret that the council is not here because the council is responsible for this deal where we have a regulation for rule of law that doesn't comply with rule of law because it's not going to be into force in the very first months or even years of its application. And then let me say, rule of law can be, of course, enforced 
with suspension of funds. But that is not all. And Article 7 is not that. And it should be also implemented by the Council towards Hungary and Poland. It's not only a question of money, it's a question of values. Thank you very much. Thank you, Herr Kollege. Thank you very much. Moving on in the debate, we now have Mr. Benifei. You have the floor. Grazie, Presidente. Thank you, President. The EU is moving forward uh, thanks to its ability and the need to build compromises between different possessions of member states and political groups here in the European Parliament and in the Council. However, there are still some topics where you can't compromise, particularly when it comes to protecting health, citizens' well-being and respect, absolute respect of fundamental rights and the principle of the rule of law. When the Polish and Hungarian governments took the EU budget hostage, they um, committed a very serious act against the rest of Europe. We were in a pandemic and uh, even the recovery plan was at risk. Just because they wanted to prevent the entry into force of the conditionality mechanism regarding the rule of law. The EU was able to react and neutralise the threat um, from those two uh, sovereigntist governments. but. Um, you know, without a view to the interests of their own citizens. In the December Council conclusions, they decided to delay the entry into force of the um, mechanism, um, linking it to guidelines and the Court of Justice ruling. And that was an unacceptable act uh, in line with what we should be opposing. We want the Commission to ignore this request from the European Commission. They should have been here um, in the room today um, and it's absolutely not binding. We want to see the uh, regulation to be implemented immediately and fully. The Commission should be defending the treaties, and um, we can't undermine the rule of law like this. Thank you. And now in the debate we have Ms Kemper. You have the floor, madam. Szanowni Państwo, Brexit. Ladies and gentlemen, we've learnt nothing from Brexit. Again, attacks are being made on Poland and Hungary. Sovereign states. We have survived other times in which foreign ideology was imposed on us, but we survived. And there are attempts to impose another ideology on us. But we are facing that just because we're against same-sex marriage. Because we're against same-sex people adopting children. Because we don't want the Euro. Because we want our own monetary and economic policy, a strong one. Commissioner, give us a definition of rule of law. We want to work based on the law. We want to reform things that have been in place since communist times. So, Commissioner, we're waiting for a clear interpretation of what was said during the December summit. Thank you. The debate continues now with Mr. Muresham. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam President. Commissioner, welcome back to the European Parliament. Dear colleagues, over the course of the next years, we, the European Union, are going to spend more money than ever from the budget of the European Union, from the 750 billion euros recovery fund, uh, which will help people, enterprises and regions affected by the corona pandemic. One thing is clear, dear colleagues, the more money we spend, the more control we need. The more money we spend, the more we need to make sure that money reaches the people in need, the real beneficiaries, farmers, students, entrepreneurs, researchers, the cities and the villages 
these are people for which EU funds are destined. We need to make sure that money reaches them. And now is the time to start uh, implementing the decisions which we have made on linking the rule of law with EU funds. This is why, Commissioner, we call upon the European Commission to start implementing the regulation as, and to come as soon as possible with the guidelines on how to apply the regulation and carry the assessment. The regulation has to be immediately and fully applicable so that we deliver to the citizens what we have promised, good control of EU funds. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll continue this debate now with Mr. Jaime Luma, who is joining us from Helsinki. The European Union is strong when it bases itself on its own values, democracy, the rule of law, human rights, the freedom of the press. It's a fact that these principles in recent years have been violated even in our own member states. And this is why we have to react to these violations. Our union is not credible unless it recognizes its own shortcomings, the shortcomings that it commits itself. I'm proud that the Finnish government following the European elections was prepared to listen to the message from the electorate and make, made sure that this issue of the rule of law was taken in. Now, this issue of the rule of law is essential. There are states which are receiving considerable sums of money. They should be obliged to respect the rule of law. That must be an absolute minimum. It's also important because there are other problems we are facing. I'm very disappointed considering the events in Poland and Hungary, but now we're seeing events in Slovenia as well. The task of the Commission in this is to make sure that this mechanism be applied decisively. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Mr. Jambatsky for one minute. Dear Commissioner, dear colleagues, once again in this room we are talking about a mechanism for building conditions with regard to the principles of uh, rule of law. When we talk about such a mechanism, we must clearly say what the rule of law is and what are the principles of so-called rule of law. We have the rule of law when we have different powers, a fair trial, a respect for civil rights and freedoms. When we talk about the rule of law, you are referring to the LGBTI rights, minority rights, and so on and so on. In fact, the rule of law is the same rules for all, equal rights and obligations, nothing more and nothing less. The countries of Poland and Hungary are in target for another reason. The reason for this is not the general principles of the Union have been viola uh, violated. The reason for these attacks are that these two countries began to defend their national sovereignty and took a an conservative and national building path. It is extremely unacceptable for us and for me to apply such a mechanism for the purpose of political pressure. Because, let's not be mistaken, the mechanism aims to change and subordinate national governments to the dictates of Brussels, not to support the rule of law. Let us not forget that the European Union is still a union of equal and sovereign states, not uh, some kind of Mickey Mouse clown federation centralized in Brussels. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to Birgit Sipper for one minute. Thank you very much. Rule of law conditionality. What is that? At its heart, it's ensuring that Europeans' tax money is not used to mine away at democracy and rule of law. But we've seen that for years. Even with Article 7 procedures, Commission and Council could not reach clear positions or sanctions. You refer to legal proceedings under the treaties, warnings against Poland and Hungary, but they are ignored. What's worse? You're not speaking out against anti-democracy and strong Fidesz and PIS parties and their actions. So if you don't respect basic rules and conditions, then you cannot expect to be supported by the EU budget.
Council and Commission must use this conditionality mechanism because the time has already passed. We should have already started. Thank you very much. Now, Dominic Tarczynski, one minute. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, obviously, this mechanism is just a political tool, so I'm not going to get into it because everyone knows that this is a political tool that has nothing to do with the rule of law. So I'd like to give you a message from the majority of Polish people. The message is very clear. It has been out loud seven times in a row. Polish nation rejected your ideas. Polish nation rejected your ideas of leftism. So you have lost seven times. Mr. Biedron would confirm, you have lost. Polish society rejected you seven times. So, to let you know, Poland is number one with unemployment. Poland is number three with m management for women. And Poland is number one, Eurostat, it's your data, not ours, is number one as the safest place in Europe. So, before you're going to judge, just before you're going to point us with your finger, maybe you should think about Sweden and the rapes on women by illegal migrants. Maybe you should focus on Germany, which is number one, with all these crimes coming over from illegal migrants instead of Poland. This is real. This is real democracy. And this is not our data. This is Eurostat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Ms. Isabella Garcia Munoz, one minute. Thank you, President. The huge work done by the negotiating team meant that we were able to reach an agreement on a balanced and implementable uh, binding mechanism, one which would clearly um, focus on the fundamental values of the European Union. This is not an ideological question. And it's not one of uh, minorities, as we've heard from the extreme right this morning. These values have always been a condition to be part of our community. And you can't apply them selectively if it's convenient for the government. Uh, we can't see discrimination or um, removal of the rights of a part of, uh, part of society. So, Commissioner Han, we have to ensure that, well, we know that from the 1st of January, the um, content of this mechanism should apply without the guidelines. Um, and this covers all types of uh, commitments and payments, including the recovery plan. European values cannot be negotiated. And we can't allow some countries to take them hostage, uh, undermining the security of Europe. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now for the Commission, Commissioner Johannes Hahn. You have the floor, sir. 